well hi friends in this video I will explain about the anatomy and histology of the stomach before going into that we have to know what the stomach is well the stomach is an J shaped enlargement of the GI tract and now we are going into the anatomy of the stomach anatomy of the stomach If we come across the anatomy, the stomach is divided into four parts which are named as first one is cardia and the second one is fundus and the third one is body and finally the fourth one is pylorus These are the four divisions of the stomach Well, let us have a clear image of the stomach this is the stomach image well here this region is called as the cardia okay well this portion is called as the fundus and this region is called as the body and finally we can observe at the end part we can observe at the end part of the stomach inside we can observe a small bulge which is called as pyloric sphincter ok well before going into that we have to know a little bit information about the pylorus this pylorus is again divided into two parts first one is pyloric anthrum pyloric anthrum and pyloric canal right right here we go well after the pyloric sphincter this region is termed as the pylorus okay this part this triangular part which is present at the edge of the stomach is called as the pyloric anthrum pyloric anthrum and the passage canal and the passage canal which is present right over here which will connect the body of the stomach with the pylorus is called as pyloric canal right this region is called as the pyloric canal this pyloric canal will connect the body of the stomach with the pylorus in this region pyloric uh, this triangular region is called as the pyloric anthrum and a, a little bit of bulged part <coughs> a little bit of bulged part are present over here which is called as the pyloric sphincter this pyloric sphincter is used to control the outflow of the foot at the same time backflow of the foot into and outside of the stomach okay this is the anatomy of the stomach well sorry I forgot to say one thing about it here it is called as the greater curvature and this part is called as the lesser curvature ok this is called as lesser curvature and this is called as greater curvature the appearance of the stomach is in the, uh, is in the letter J shape so it is termed as J shaped organ J shaped sorry J shaped enlargement enlargement of GIT gastrointestinal tract well now we will go into the histology of the stomach histology of stomach right if you go to the histology of the stomach we can observe four layers we can observe four layers here the first layer is called as mucosa and the second layer is called as submucosa and the third layer is called as 
muscularis and the fourth layer is called as serosa well among these four the mucosa is again divided into three types and the muscularis is also divided into three subtypes if we go to the mucosa this mucosa contain is again divided into three types among that the first one is epithelial layer epithelial layer and the second one is lamina propria lamina propria and the final one is muscularis mucosae well here we have to observe a little bit here the second layer is called as musc uh, sub mucosa but the third subdivision of the mucosa layer is called as muscularis mucosae okay we'll write these are the three subdivisions of the mucosa layer well if you go to the second one sub mucosa it is formed by means of it is formed by means of areolar tissue areolar tissue and if we go to the third one which is called as muscularis here we can observe three kinds of muscle layers among that the first one is longitudinal longitudinal and the second one is circular and the final one is oblique well these three layers is from the position outside to inside the longitudinal layer is the outside layer the circular layer is the middle one and the deepest layer is called as the oblique muscle layers well these three layers are made up of smooth muscle that's why they are in involuntary control involuntary control all right and the final one zero cell layer is made up of areolar connective tissue areolar connective tissue with simple squamous simple squamous epithelium well among the whole GA tract we can observe the oblique layer in only the stomach in the rest of the whole GA it consists of the muscularis layer muscularis layer in that only there will be a presence of longitudinal and circular muscle layers but in the stomach we can observe the additional layer especially which is called as oblique why because because of the presence of these three layers there will be a lot of uh, crunching movements will take place in the stomach for the digestion of the food well if you go to the cells which are present in the stomach they are of divided into two types first one is exocrine exocrine cells and the second one is endocrine cells which are termed as enteroendocrine cells well if we go to the exocrine cells these exocrine cells are divided into three types they are first one is mucus neck cell or mucus cells and the second one is chief cells and the third one is parietal cells well if you go to the function of these three cells let us go let us discuss about the first cell which is called as mucus cell here what is the function of this mucus cells means simply they secrete the mucus and if you go to the chief cells they will secrete the enzymes called as pepsinogen pepsinogen and gastric lipase pepsinogen and gastric lipase 
and if you go to the third cells which are called as parietal cells simply they will secrete the intrinsic factor and hydrochloric acid what is the function of this intrinsic factor means it is useful for the absorption of vitamin b12 that is the actual function of this intrinsic factor and the hcl is used for the digestion of the food and if you come across to the endocrine cells these endocrine cells will release the hormone among this this g cells are present well these g cells will release the hormone called as somato sorry sorry gastrin 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 is a hormone which is released by the g cells of the endocrine cells of uh, stomach this gastrin is especially released in this pyloric anthrum okay this gastrin is a hormone which is released in the pyloric anthrum region okay these mucus neck cells chief cells and parietal cells are present in the first layer which is called as the mucosal layer in that epithelial layer okay these three kinds of cells which are termed as mucus cells chief cells and parietal cells are present in the epithelial layer of mucosa okay in the second layer which is termed as lamina propria here blood vessels and lymphatic vessels will be present blood and lymphatic vessels vessels so present which are extended towards the submucosa which are extended towards the submucosa here in the muscularis mucosae there will be a presence of smooth muscle and if we go to the muscularis here we can observe three kinds of layers which are called as longitudinal circular and oblique these three layers will give a, a definite shape a definite good shape at the same time useful for the complete uh, grinding movements nothing but mechanical movement of the stomach and it is useful for the digestion of food particles which are present in the stomach and finally the last layer which is called as serosa here there will be a presence of two kinds of layers which is called as areal or connective tissue layer and simple squamous epithelial layer these two are combined to form the serosa layer these two kinds of cells are combined to form the serosa layer okay this is all about the anatomy and histology of the stomach well here we can observe the image of the stomach here i am trying to zoom it to notify the parts of the stomach here in the anatomy we can find four parts cardia fundus body and pylorus well the pylorus is divided into two parts which are termed as pyloric anthrum and pyloric canal it is in j shape enlargement of git here we can observe the image of the stomach where the cardia fundus body and the pylorus are present we can observe right over here here we can observe the greater curvature and here we can observe the lesser curvature okay this region is called as pylorus here we can observe two things which are called as pyloric sphincters okay these two are the pyloric sphincters and this region is called as pyloric anthrum and if you go to the histology of the stomach here we can find four layers mucosa submucosa muscularis and serosa mucosa is divided into three layers they are called as epithelial layer lamina propria muscularis mucosae and submucosa consists of areolar tissue and muscularis consists of longitudinal circular and oblique muscles muscle layers and serosa consists of areolar connective tissue plus simple squamous epithelium well these three layers which are these these three muscle layers so formed by means of smooth muscle so they are in involuntary control